looking to get away from the craziness of Las Vegas, this is five things to do outside of Las Vegas. First on our list at number one, the Seven Magic Mountains. When my friend said that she wanted to visit the Seven Magic Mountains, at first I thought she said the Seven Magic Mushrooms, and I was like, oh, this is one of those kind of trips. But no, the Seven Magic Mountains are a art exhibit created by Swiss artist Hugo, this guy. The exhibition was opened in 2016 and was scheduled to open for two years. However, it quickly gained a lot of attention and got extended to 2021. Now, when you're watching this video, it's probably past 2021. So uh, yeah, I hope it's still there. Right now they are working on a extension to the land permit to extend it to 2026. So I hope that goes through and I think it's, it's a pretty cool exhibition. So, you know, I'd like to see it around. It is located near Jean Dry Lake, which is about 10 miles south of Las Vegas or about a 25 minute drive. These large mountains are a series of boulders that have been placed and stacked on top of each other and painted various different colors. It is an Instagrammer's paradise. You will find this location posted all over social media and that's where my friend found out about it in the first place. Quick note, if you go there, there are no bathrooms or facilities or anything there. So make sure you come prepared. Being so close to Las Vegas, if you're in the area, then this is a great place to take a quick little trip and just go explore something different. The rocks themselves are quite large, they're very colorful, and definitely walk around and explore because you can take tons of different pictures and perspectives from this area. And while there are a lot of people, if you keep moving around, then you'll probably be able to find a spot that doesn't have a lot of people in it. Next, we have the Hoover Dam. You may have seen the Hoover Dam in the news in 2021 because the reservoir behind the Hoover Dam had its water levels drop to historic lows, lower than than when the dam was actually built. This 726 foot high dam powers homes and businesses in parts of Nevada, Arizona, and California. The record low water levels in Lake Mead are due to an ongoing drought in the Colorado River drainage basin. While the water level might be low, the Hoover Dam is still an impressive sight to behold and still worth checking out. The Hoover Dam itself is a stunning marvel of engineering surrounded by these huge majestic cliffs. It looks really, really neat and it just makes you wonder like, how on earth did they build this thing? Also something relatively recent for those of you who have visited the dam before 2010, next to the dam is the second highest bridge in the United States called the Mike O'Coughlin Pat Tillman Memorial Bridge. Yeah, quite the name, uh, it's here. This bridge was constructed as the old highway path ran across the top of the dam and the narrow road on the dam caused a lot of traffic and it was dangerous. So I actually remember visiting the dam over 15 years ago before this bridge existed. Traffic was really bad back then. So now with this bridge, it's much easier to go ahead and cross without having to go over the Hooper Dam itself. Continuing to drive along this route will lead you to the next destination on our list, the Grand Canyon West Rim. The Hoover Dam is a little bit under halfway towards this next stop, which is about two and a half hours out of Las Vegas. Many of you have probably heard of or seen images of the Grand Canyon. Most visitors go to the Grand Canyon National Park, which you would assume contains the entire Grand Canyon. However, the Grand Canyon is almost 300 miles long, so yeah, the National Park doesn't include literally everything. Part of the land goes through Hualapai tribal land. I hope I'm saying that right. And this part is known as the Grand Canyon West Rim. It is significantly smaller and lesser known than the North and South Rim owned by the National Park Service. However, the West Rim is a lot closer to Las Vegas than the North and South Rim. So if you're making a trip out of it and you wanna go see the Grand Canyon without driving like forever out, then the West Rim is your best bet. There are both bus and helicopter tours that go from Las Vegas to the West Rim. So if you don't wanna go drive out there yourself, then you have those options as well. The main attraction of the West Rim lies at Eagle Point, which is one of the two overlooks here. The grand attraction here is the Skywalk, which is a glass arched path that extends out over the canyon itself, allowing you to look directly down over 4,000 feet into the canyon below. It is a massive structure and it does feel very safe despite the fact that, you know, it is pretty intimidating. So if you're afraid of heights, then good luck, but um, just know that you'll, you'll be safe. 
One thing to note is that you're not allowed to take anything onto the bridge, including like cell phones, wallets, purses, etc. So like they give you lockers and stuff, which are free, but um, you pretty much have to store everything. So you can take your own photos, but they do have photographers that will um, take photos and stuff for you, like professional photographers. And you have to buy those. They're a little expensive. Um, but that's just something to know that if you're gonna go there, then you can't bring your own cameras or cell phones or anything to take your own stuff. The second overlook at the West Rim is Guano Point, and this offers a much more scenic view than the first, um, even though the first one has the skywalk. This one offers a really, really cool 360 degree view of the canyon. If you don't have the time to go to the more popular south or north rim of the Grand Canyon, then the west rim is definitely your best bet to be able to go and explore and you know experience the Grand Canyon itself. You definitely can make a day trip out to the west rim. It probably won't even take you the whole day because it only takes about two to three hours to fully explore the Grand Canyon west rim because it's really not that large. Now we are on to the hottest item on our list, the Valley of Fire, because you know, fire, but it's not actually the hottest item on this list, you know, spoiler alert. The Valley of Fire is a mesmerizing location. And when I say mesmerizing, I mean like, like literally everyone kept wanting to stop the car every five seconds to go take photos and stuff because it's just, it's so unique. Everywhere you look, it just looks amazing. The amount of stops you can make to take different shots for Instagram is endless. While this state park is not nearly as large as other national parks in the area, like Arches, Zion, the Grand Canyon, don't let that fool you. This park should not be overlooked. Out of the group of friends that I traveled here with, the consensus was this was the most stunning place that we went the entire trip. I will have a more in-depth guide to the Valley of Fire coming out soon, so keep an eye out for that. Valley of Fire is located just under an hour away from Las Vegas itself. It will take you through some fairly drab, plain looking land, and then all of a sudden, like, Boom. It's like the most red, crazy, out of this world rocks that you've ever seen. The main scenic road in the Valley of Fire is called the White Domes Road. There are a lot of trails throughout the park that extend from the road and lots and lots of scenic overlooks as you go down the road. So feel free to just not really have a plan because like you're just gonna wanna stop everywhere. And trust me, even though the main road is really only one road that goes about two miles long, that's two, like to and from, that's it. Like you're gonna wanna stop everywhere. Cause as you drive down, you're gonna pass by so many amazing things and then you're gonna turn around and drive back and you're gonna see just a whole different perspective as you drive back. Like it's just, it's wild. One of the most notable locations is called the Fire Wave. Not to be confused with the wave in Arizona. This is a trail and does require some hiking to get to. Other notable trails and locations are the White Domes Loop, Elephant Rock, and the Pink Canyon, which is a lesser known trail. I've been here twice and both times I've been able to see some desert bighorn sheep and it's pretty cool to see the wildlife and stuff. And one of the times we were there, we saw them climbing along the cliffs on the sides of the road, which was also really cool. It also caused a huge traffic jam because like everyone wanted to stop and take pictures of it. Uh, but it's really cool to see. So keep your eye out for that. This park can easily take you over a day to just explore and really just enjoy everything. But the last time that we were there, we were on a time crunch and we only spent two hours there, but we were still able to see a good fair, you know, bit of the park. So if you're on a time crunch, you can do it in a shorter period of time, but I would advise spending at least half a day here. All right, coming in at number five, we have our last location, which will easily take a day or more to explore. This is the literal hottest place in the United States, Death Valley. Oh man, like I cannot get enough of this place and Death Valley will have a video of its own if you want a more in-depth guide, so keep an eye out for that. This is not only the hottest place in the United States, but the lowest in the whole Western Hemisphere at 282 feet below sea level. I said we were 282 feet under sea level and if you look up at the mountain here, you can see the sea level sign. This point is at Badwater Basin. This is a salt flat, meaning that the ground here isn't snow, it's straight salt. It looks really wild. We were here in November and it was hot. Another must see location is the Mesquite Flat Sand Dunes, which are just these beautiful, huge sand dunes with the mountains in the background and it's, it's gorgeous. If you plan on going hiking there, especially out to the tallest sand dune, which is about a mile out, then you'll wanna make sure that you are prepared for it because one, is hot, two, hiking on sand is not very simple. It is very strenuous on your feet. So 
a mile to and from of hiking on sand, it's, it's, it'll take a toll on you. So just be prepared for that. Death Valley also has its famous moving rocks at the location called the racetrack where the rocks seemingly magically move and leave these trails as they race around the track. It's pretty wild and uh, definitely looks unique. We now know that this is due to ice that forms in the ground and slowly melts and pushes these rocks along. Zabriskie Point is another amazing location with just a fantastic overlook giving you this 360 degree view of the mountains and all of their majestic colors and terrains and, and textures and stuff. And it's, it's definitely don't wanna miss this. This is one of my favorite spots. There are just so many stunning spots in Death Valley. And if you want more information, just keep an eye out for my Death Valley guide. And there you have it, five places to go outside of Las Vegas. Each of these places is within driving distance of Las Vegas. And you can keep Las Vegas as your hub if you wanna visit all of these places without driving literally around and staying at all these different places. Vegas can be your main hub. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope that was helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, or if you have suggestions to places that are worth visiting outside of Las Vegas, feel free to leave those in the comment section down below and I would love to see those. And on that note, I will see you guys in the next one.